La Nuova Dolce Vita. The new good life. Behind me is the latest creation from the prancing horse brand, the Ferrari Roma. And just looking at it, it makes all of my senses tingle, even though that essentially, it's just the new entry level Ferrari. Not only that, but Ferrari says that a whopping 70% of the buyers of this car will be first timers with the brand. And that has everything to do with how this car is designed. Engine in the front, and boot at the back. Right. Two seats behind the front passengers makes this a two plus two, or a plus two, as Ferrari calls the Roma. These few but important characteristics define the car as a Gran Turismo, instead of a supercar. However, don't think for a second that this car isn't a real Ferrari. As it incorporates tech from the Formula One world, it's the lightest in its class, and the engine, even though it's in the front, is pushed back behind the wheels, still making it mid-engine. Now, the Roma is powered by a 3.8-liter twin-turbo V8 that develops 620 metric horsepower and 760 newton meters of torque. Putting the power down to the rear wheels is a new eight-speed dual-clutch transmission that has trickled itself down from the 1,000-horsepower SF90 hypercar. The new transmission is more efficient than the previous seven-speed, which allows Ferrari to use less cooling and and in turn, completely change the front end. The long, sweeping hood is quintessentially Ferrari, very much so in line with heritage cars like the 250 GT Berlinetta Lusso and the 2 Plus 2. The all new grille design is boldly color matched to the rest of the body, no matter which color you get one in, and is something unheard of as it's smaller than what other manufacturers are putting out these days. This was achieved thanks to that new gearbox running cooler and separates itself quite dramatically from the rest of the lineup. Oh, and that gearbox also reduces fuel consumption, but judging by the price, I don't think owners will care. In my opinion, it is one of the best looking Ferraris you can buy brand new today. Simple and elegant. At the rear, the car has new taillights. No longer are they round, but flat, boasting a new identity for Ferrari. And above that, an automatic boot spoiler cleverly hidden behind the rear window. Curiously though, Ferrari doesn't allow you to raise it up on your own. There's no button inside to do that. It's like the designers wanted the car to look like this all the time while standing still, but the engineers insisted for extra downforce when the car needs it. Obviously, this being a GT car, you need to have a boot with enough space to take your things for a weekend away from home. And look at this a plaque on the back of the boot that shows all the optional extras I got or you got with your brand new Ferrari Roma. Thank you for making my life much easier. Inside, the Roma impresses further with a dual cabin layout clearly separating the driver from the passenger. The interior was shaped thanks to the new technology used that will most probably trickle into future models. The steering wheel was created with a new philosophy, eyes on the road, hands on the wheel, and has every function you'd ever need on it, including the start button on a new screen at the bottom. The Manatino returns, and it's a work of art. With it, you can tell the car how you would like it to behave, and if you're brave enough, you can turn everything off. Behind the steering wheel is a new 16-inch display, replacing the traditional dashboard and provides all the necessary information you would ever need. And in the middle of the cockpit, an 8.4-inch vertical screen that allows easy access to music, your phone, and other settings of the car.
So long story short, I'm in Dubai because uh, Bahrain went into lockdown again. I couldn't get the car again and Ferrari Dubai were uh, so nice and kind that they gave me another one. So I'm driving a red one this time. Nevertheless, it's a good day to be in Dubai, not gonna lie. Although these roads are absolutely terrifying, but so far this car has done so well. I'm surprised it's doing really well in the heat. It's around 42 degrees today. Hasn't had one single hiccup. The AC is fine. And uh, we're gonna go out onto the road and the highway and see what this car is all about. It always feels really special when all the controls are in different places. For example, now I got everything on the steering wheel, including the signal stalks or the lack of them. There are actually buttons on them. So I keep trying to reach around to find them and you touch these enormous shift pedals. This one that made out of carbon fiber, absolutely lovely to touch and play around with shift down. Shifts are very quick. I'm just in the sport mode because in normal driving mode, the stability control is so aggressive to keep you safe from killing yourself that it will jerk from time to time. I mean, it's got a lot of horsepower going back to the rear wheels. I mean, Ferrari says it's approachable. I mean, so far driving in traffic and just doing what you would normally do on your day with your Roma. Oh yeah, it is. Oh yeah. As a matter of fact, it's much better than most Ferraris I've driven in circumstances like these because I'm sitting in a comfy seat. I got tons of headroom, great leg room. I'd actually say it's quite comfortable and that's something I don't think I've ever said in a Ferrari, which is a good thing as this car is supposed to be a GT car used on a daily basis. I can see everything perfectly in front of me, around me, huge mirrors. The window in the back is kind of small, but I do have a reverse camera if I'm doing some maneuvering or parking and that display comes up right in front of me. So very easy to use so far. It does have a double clutch. So when you're parking, you do need to kind of press both of the pedals to get into neutral or one pedal to go into first gear and then use the gear select down here to go into reverse. Takes some time getting used to, but definitely not as difficult as your normal supercar. But just because it's easy to drive, it doesn't mean it's mundane at all. You have this huge long hood in front of you. You can see the curves, you see the color of the car, the sound, even though that the noise is a bit muted because of the gas particulate filter, uh, they've done some trickery to make it sound like it's a Ferrari, like something special. And I don't think you would want a very loud car if you were going to drive it every day. I mean, for the first two months, it would be great. But after that, you know, it might get kind of annoying. So I think Ferrari has struck a a perfect balance between Ferrari-ness and everyday-ness. Speed limit where I am at here right now is 90, so I can't really do any type of pulls. Just put my foot down and see how the transmission reacts. Did you hear that? That was from eighth gear to third, directly into the power range. That's quick. That's really quick. I can't wait to get this thing out of the desert so we can do some pulls. The brakes feel fantastic, as you would expect in a performance car, uh, but they're not too hard to work with in stop-go traffic. A lot of these cars, they'll, you know, they'll bite really quickly and then release, while this has a more progressive approach to braking. So you don't need to worry about looking like an idiot driving in traffic, just going, you know. So we're almost where we're supposed to be to go and gun it a little bit. But on the way, I noticed that this interior, I mean, it's just so nice to touch. It's so uh, well made. And that's not something that Ferrari has done really well in the past, but they've absolutely knocked it out of the park in this one. The amount of Alcantara everywhere is just so nice to touch. I just find myself rubbing everything. It's like, ah, oh, and a little bit more Italian leather over here. Um, the steering wheel is really nice, although the top part really gets hot in this weather, thanks to it being made out of carbon fiber. This is the best Ferrari interior, in my opinion, right now. Okay, so we're in the desert. I got a nice stretch in front of me. We're gonna engage launch control, foot on the brake, on the gas. about it's got some power baby 3.4 seconds to 100 0 to 62 as well miles an hour oh my god 
<laughs> that is what I'm talking about. Let's see what we can find here on these roads. I want to find some turns. Oh, we found some camels over there. Look at these guys. They're just chilling, man. They're just walking, going for a walk. Hey, buddy, I'm not gonna, don't worry. I'm not gonna do anything. Just walking around, you guys going for a walk too? Yeah, man, enjoy it, bro. Enjoy it. Okay, so I'm not gonna go there because uh, just camels chilling. Let's go see if we can find another road. But I can tell you this, car is flat. This is definitely the easiest Ferrari to drive. At no point whatsoever was I terrified of driving it. I think the roads in Dubai terrified me more than this car. It's so approachable. It is the most approachable Ferrari. La Nuova Dolce Vita? <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. More of this Ferrari. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you later. See you next time.